All right, so we're going to start by taking off the two um, bolts that hold on the caliper. One right there, and then there's one <coughs> underneath right there. We'll go ahead and take them out. So we've got the two bolts out. Um, so the next thing is to take the caliper off, and you need to pull it from the bottom and um, and pivot it out. Go ahead. And one of the tricks to do that is if you rotate the... I'll help you. Yeah, right. I'm going to move it. Yep. Yep. And then we'll tie that up. One second. And we'll just tie this up to one of the coils of the spring. Uh, it's backwards. Yeah, it is. Whoops. That's all right. Well. She can do this with two separate hands. <laughs> Just so that it's not hanging on the brake cable, because you don't want the brake cable to be stressed. They're looking good. Okay. And so the next thing we'll do is we will take out, um, yeah, take off the the disc. How loose is it? So that might require a little bit of hammering. So we'll just do some gentle tapping around the edge. We might need to be a little bit more than gentle. We'll have to see. There we go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take off the nut holding on the half shaft right off the end of the hub there. Pull that pin. Retainer will come off, exposing the nut that we need to get out of there. And there's a little tiny show, show that there's that little tiny tension spring there that you need to make sure you don't lose. All right, and we'll go after this nut. All right, so we've got the 32 inch, uh, 32 inch, 32 millimeter socket, and just take the pry bar and put it in there like that and then put the 32 millimeter socket on the end and that's enough to hold it if it has been greased and loosen that sucker up and that nut should come right out so we already got it cracked so the next step is just to remove that nut I'm gonna wheel that sucker out of there and then we'll move on to the next step so next is to take the, uh, the nut, loosen the nut on the bottom of this tie rod, and uh, we want to wheel that sucker down all the way to the bottom so that when we're tapping on it from underneath, we're only um, tapping on the nut and not on the end of the, the bolt. Then once you tap on this or whack on it with a small hand sledge, um, it'll break loose here. And then we can take the nut out the bottom. And this will come straight up. And we just got to make sure you save this heat shield piece and don't lose that. Other than that, you can just move this to the side, get it out of your way. And then the next step will be to loosen these two guys right here. And we'll be able to tilt this out 
and get it off the uh, ball joint on the bottom here. All right, so we got this bolt out of the strut and this bolt out of the strut. So the next thing we're going to do is take out the bolt holding on the lower ball joint, which, if we can see that, is right there. So we'll need to put a wrench on one side and a socket on the other, and we'll be able to get that bolt out and then get this ball joint separated. All right, so now that we got the knuckle assembly off, you can hear, if we turn this thing, how bad that bearing is inside there. So that's the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna work on uh, getting it separated from the bearing. So here we want to try and show you how the pieces of the the hub assembly go together. Um, we'll show you in reverse a little bit, but to start, this is in the center there is the bearing itself, and one of the races came off when we pressed out the center piece. And that you can see, well, go ahead and put the plate on, just to show them where the plate goes. This is the plate that actually holds the hub, holds the bearing in the hub. Um, we took those three bolts out, and now you can, now we'll be able to press that whole bearing out. Um, but then the actual hub with the wheel studs on it goes down the center there. And it, can you flip it over, Jake? And you can see what we did was we pressed on this edge right here to push the hub out from underneath using a 20-ton uh, um, press. Now, the if you can... Yep. So that's how it would have fit together. Um, if you pull it back off again, you can see that this race piece... I think I pointed this out already, but if you tilt it to the side, you can see that the race piece is still stuck on there, and we'll have to get that off with a bearing splitter. But... I think what we'll do next is we'll push this bearing out and get the rest of the bearing out of there. Yep. There you go. That's a good shot. If you can see, let's see if we can get a close-up shot of that. How that is all damaged there. It's all ridgy. If you flip it to the other side, you can kind of compare how that side is smoother right there. And if you flip it around again, you can see how this side is all damaged. And that's what was causing our trouble.
All right, so to get that race off of the shaft here, the race was on there like that, we took the air chisel and basically got under the lip behind it and basically chiseled it out, um, hit it from the lip on behind until it walked its way off. Um, once it cracks loose, it comes out pretty simply. You just got to be careful not to score the, um, the main shaft which we did put a little score in it, but all you have to do at that point is just sand that score down so that it's that it doesn't obstruct the bearing going back on because once it goes back on, it's not going to move anyway. So um, from there, we'll go to the next step of reassembly. All right, so we pressed the old bearing out, which is right here, with a 20-ton press. Just got it under this side with a, uh, a retaining ring and pressed it out through that side. Um, you can see a little bit better now how we're missing that, that race on the inside that we have to get off of the hub shaft but uh, you know we just set this in here on the old one and put it on the, the press and pressed it through took a bit of pressure to get it to crack but then it did and we we're able to push it out and then we put the new one in there is a positive stop on this right here so you can't push it too far just took a block of wood, <coughs> set it across the top here, and just hammered it in. Um, you know, that's gentle enough that it's not going to damage anything, and it's going to press it in nice and even.